So let us pray. Lord God, thank you for your kindness and goodness. Help us now to look into your wondrous word and to understand it. We ask this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, we're still we're going to stay with that th with this thesis. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. That after the order of Melchizedek, that's what we're hooking on to. But before we get to the lesson itself, look at this. I wanted to show you this. This is found in Hebrews, which is going to be uh, which is amazing because once we study the book of Exodus, especially this where we we've, we've been looking at the tabernacle. Oh, it opens up the book of Hebrews. If you don't, if you never looked at that, and I was talking to a person yesterday that just got out of the hospital. And he's never read about the tabernacle, so I couldn't really get into because this was hot in my mind. So I wanted to talk to him about this, but I couldn't because he doesn't understand the tabernacle. Look at the look at nine one. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine <coughs> service and a worldly sanctuary. A worldly sanctuary. That's that's a of the world. Uh, which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and service sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. Okay, so look at this. This is a mouthful, folks. This is amazing. Worldly sanctuary. That sanctuary is the tabernacle. Worldly. That means of this world. Because that was, remember the, Moses was told, make, make it exactly to the pattern that I'm going to tell you. So Moses was told exactly three times, make it exactly the way I'm telling you, because it was a picture of the one in heaven Amen. where Jesus was going to go in with his blood. And then look what it says. It was a figure a, a similitude or something similar was a figure for the time. So this was, it was, it was a, <coughs> for that time that could not make him that did the service perfect. It really didn't do the job concerning the conscience. And that's why we tell you. This is what we're saying that the, the law, if you go to the route of the law, the law will really mess you up. It will make you mess up your psyche. And, and this, this, we're being warned. Uh, because look, it's all, all been done already by Jesus. So when you rest in Jesus, ta-da. Uh, okay, now look at this. Carnal ordinances. That's what it means. All this, all these sacrifices and all that really didn't do the job. And he tells us in other places, the blood of bulls, the blood of goats, and so on, doesn't really do the job. When it comes to the conscience, because they point uh, until the time of the Ref of Reformation, that's until the time of Jesus. Jesus is the real thing, okay? So that's, so this is where we left off. And I, and I wanted to review this as well. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down, come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what is becoming of him. So, what is the picture? Of, uh, what is Aaron a picture of? Does anyone remember what we were talking about? The conscience. The conscience. So we're looking at that now, folks. I'm telling you, this is not in the commentaries. So don't let it bother you if, if you find that it doesn't work for you. But I'm telling you what, it makes a lot of sense. You know, when you look at it this way. That most that Aaron is a picture of the conscience. Um, the people saw that Moses delayed because Moses is still up in the mountain. He was up there for forty days, forty nights, and he's gonna come. He's gonna come down with the law. So this is before the law. Keep that in mind. So Aaron is doing this thing, and I always found fault with Aaron. I thought, not you, Aaron, of all people. Why did he build the golden calf? I mean, Moses' brother. That, that didn't seem right. So until I looked at it this way, now it makes a whole lot of sense. 
Okay, so he remember we ended last chapter. The last thing God reminded Moses is, okay, keep the Sabbath. Make sure you keep the Sabbath. Keep the Sabbath. And that means to rest. When you rest in the work of Jesus, you're good. But if you don't rest in his work and you start doing works, which means that, see, we're all, once we're uh, saved, we don't distinguish ourselves. I mean, we got different gifts. But when I teach, I'm not doing this to gain brownie points with the Lord. I'm already in, folks. I'm totally accepted. Teaching the Word of God doesn't make me more accepted. Right. I mean, I'm already totally accepted. Right. I mean, I could just be, you know, I think of little Reagan, you know. Uh, Reagan is totally, me and her are accepted totally. Amen. You know, we're on the same plane. And yet I teach and she doesn't. I mean, how can that be? Well, that's just the way the Lord is. Um, it's amazing. So it, it, it makes us rest. You don't have to work. You know, you're good for nothing. That's what you, that's what you are, you know? Um, um, and the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron. Look at this. So they, they were told to rest, but immediately, because that word delayed. You know, when somebody doesn't show up, what? We made an agreement. We was going to show up at 8 o'clock. Where did they go? You know, you start tapping your foot. You know, what is the thing here? Standing me up. We don't like to wait. And so here's what happens. Up. Make us gods. And that's what we say. Hurry up. Come on. Hurry up. And that's what that means there. Make us gods. And so they're not resting. That's what that means. They're not resting. So look what the, okay, this is, we, we, we already looked at this. Aaron. He's a unique person because you only find one Aaron in the Bible. You need the brother of Moses, a Levite, first high priest, a mediator, and his name means very high, light. And light can mean understanding, okay? So very high. Um, and he's the brother of Moses, a Levite. Keep that in mind. We're going to be looking at that. So Aaron and Moses and Miriam, they're all related. They're brothers and sisters, okay? Miriam is the oldest. She was probably about nine, six years old to nine years old when Moses was born. Or, you know, she's about six years older or, or nine years older than Moses. And then comes Aaron. And remember, this is concerning what the Lord said. When Moses says, I'm not eloquent enough, I can't talk, the Lord says, okay, your brother. Your brother will do the talking. He can speak well. Right. That's amazing, folks, because the conscience... It's a talker. Oh, yeah. It'll nag you to death. I mean, you just do something wrong, and the conscience will jump in and says, uh-uh, what did you do? Uh-uh. Like a chihuahua. Yes, he, he's right there. He'll jump on you. Uh, so he speaks well. Uh, so we know he's a speaker. Aaron is a speaker, and we also know that he's weak. How do, why do I say that? Remember, I told you that I, I, I think he's weak because he, he sided with Miriam when they they picked on Moses because Moses had married that black woman. And they, Miriam started this thing, and so Aaron went with her. And then for that, the Lord turned her into leprosy because the Lord says, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. You're picking on Moses? And she was out the camp for seven uh, days, okay? So that thing, I, I think that makes him weak. Aaron is weak, and we're going to see that um, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not. See, so the now, so Aaron relies, or the conscience relies on knowledge. We wot not that to know. Uh, the people are saying that we don't know what happened. So once you don't know uh, something. Uh, you're going to go with something else. And so Moses has been gone for 40 days, so this is what happens here. Um, these are hands concerning Aaron, okay? And they, and they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience, this is a picture from John 8, 9, went out one by one, con uh, beginning at the eldest, even, even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone with the woman standing in the midst. So... They were convicted by the speaker, and I believe this is the speaker. They were told, 
you know, concerning what Jesus was writing on the floor, they were brought to, they were convicted because he's a talker. And we said that the conscience is the inner feeling or voice viewed as acting as a guide to the rightness or wrongness of one's behavior. And uh, Webster uh, 28 says this, internal or self-knowledge or judgment of right and wrong or the faculty, power, or principle within us which de decides on the lawfulness or unlawfulness of our own actions and affections instantly approves or condemns them. So that's the picture of the conscience. Now, why is the conscience not reliable? Is anybody? Why is it not reliable? It can be seared. Yes, it can be messed up. It can be seared. We know that we can have a good conscience. You know, that can happen. We were told in 23.1, Acts 23.1. But we also know that the that 1 Corinthians 8, 7 says conscience can be weak and defiled, you know? So if it's weak, and here's, a, this is a case with Aaron. And now you know why he made the golden calf, you know? He said, uh, and you can have a, a seer, like Mark just mentioned. You can have a seer conscience, and I believe this is where the serial killers fall into. Because I was listening to one time years ago, I listened to the Ted Bundy uh, interview, and it was amazing how he talks so frankly about he killed young girls. He would molest them, abuse them, and then kill them. I thought, like, how can a man like that sleep? Well, once the conscience is seared, it's beyond feeling. He can sleep good, you know? And this is probably, these, people, these same people probably can pass a poly, poly test. What do they call it? What do you call Polygraph. it? Polygraph test. Yeah, they could, because they're cool. Um, and, of course, you can have an evil conscience. So this is why it's not reliable. The conscience is not reliable. And um, so here we go. He's a Levite. Now look at this, folks. This is amazing. He, that means he comes from Levi. Levi means attached. To be joined unto me. To be joined unto me. And this is the name that Leah gave him. See, the Bible is amazing because it, it gives you all this information. I mean, why would a... Why would you name your baby attached? It doesn't make sense. Or even worse, uh, when uh, um, Naomi names her boys sickly and names one sickly and the other one dying or something like that. I mean, that's crazy. Why would you name your boys that? Because there's insights. There's <laughs> insights. Um, be joined to me. And so he, his older brother was Simeon. Simeon means to hear, or it, to hear intelligently or obedient. That's what that means. And so these two guys, I believe that Reuben is out. He was the oldest boy. So I believe that, remember what Simeon and Levi did? They went and attacked a little town and massacred the entire male population because they were, they were hurting after being circumcised. They went in there and massacred the entire village. That was wrong. But they were so right, because they, remember they, uh, Shechem raped Dinah. Dinah means justice. They mess with justice. And Levi, he's for justice. Oh yeah, I mean, and that's, that's a picture of the conscience. We're getting to the conscience, because the conscience, it'll set you straight real quick. You stick, you steal a piece of bubble gum, and says, uh-huh. Yeah, but it was nothing. I mean, it's probably worth a penny. Nonetheless, you stole it. Who's going to miss it? You know, it was just nothing. The conscience says, no, nonetheless, you stole it. And that's the, what the conscience does. It's a stickler. But as we said, the conscience can be messed up. You know, and that's what I think, uh, you know, doing the sign of the cross, what a lot of people do, it's, it's crazy. You know, I, I tell my sister, it's like, see, you could do this. It'd be the same thing. It does, <laughs> it does nothing. I mean, it does not, you know, this, 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 this. Do, 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 do. I don't, you know, whatever. It, it does nothing because it's nothing. But if you believe in that and your parents have taught you to do that, if you don't do it, it becomes sin. Huh? Because the conscience is messed up. Um, so 
He's a Levite. That's what I'm getting at. Now look at Miriam. Miriam means bitter, rebellious, or disobedient. Wow. And Aaron means this. And we're a very high light. And then Moses means this, drawing out. So I think Moses, which is the law, goes through the speaker to the people to draw out the rebelliousness that's inside us. Okay? So, so here we go. Look at this. Exodus 4.15. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth, and will teach you what you shall do, and he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of God. This is what most, the Lord is telling Moses, because Moses said, I can't speak to the Lord. Okay, Aaron will speak for you. And this is, what, this is concerning Aaron. So see what I mean? He's a speaker, and he says, he's, he's going to be your mouth. So the law speaks through the conscience, and then he, he'll tell us. But this is before the law. If, you don't, if you're not trained in the law, you don't know what's right and what's wrong. And therefore, the conscience takes on a, of its own. Because it's a learner. It's a, it, it can be trained. And I, don't, I remember my, I told you that my mom trained me well. My mom said, uh, stay in that chair. And the boys came and said, come on, let's go play. I, says, I looked at my mom. She says, she didn't say anything. She just looked at me. I says, I ain't going nowhere, guys. You know, I was trained. I was already trained because she, because my mom would keep her word. She says, "Oh, remember what you did the other day, or yes, or yesterday, or a little while ago when you were, we were there?" I says, "What? What?" He says, "Remember what you did? I told you not to move, and you moved." Oh, mom, I'll never do it again. It's too late. You done did it. I says, "Oh, good night, mom." I, she was cruel. You know, she wouldn't forgive. She wouldn't forget. Uh, <laughs> So I was trained. So the conscience, after a while, you respect mom. Mom told you to do that? To do it. Just do it. Amen. You know? So that you can be trained. Now, look at this. To Aaron, the law becomes God. And this is what these people did. The Jewish people, they started treating the law as God. Um, now look at this. This is very interesting because you find in Psalm 110, 4, the Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. <coughs> this is the thesis we're taking. So look what it says. Seven times, and that's the number of perfection. It is found in the Bible that seven times this phrase after the order of Melchizedek is found. One, Psalms 110, Hebrews 5, 6, Hebrews 5, 10, Hebrews 6, 20. Hebrews 7, 11, Hebrews 7, 17, Hebrews 7, 21. This is key, folks, because Jesus is going to be after the order of Melchizedek. Why is that important? Oh, it is very important. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should arise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? Wow, God changes everything in this stream. You know, he gives you something. And now look at this. The tabernacle, when God gave them the law, because this is what the route they wanted to go. Remember the Jewish people says, we'll do it. They were asked several times, can you keep the law? They said, yes, we can keep it. Several times. So I said, so God, God is so good and kind. He says, okay, I'm going to give you the law, but I'm going to give you the tabernacle and the priest. They got a package, the whole thing. They got all this deal because of what they did. Now look at this. So we looked at the, the, the tabernacle is a picture of man. It's got three parts, just like we have three parts, body, soul, and spirit. Two parts of me you cannot see. The soul and the spirit are invisible. And that's the thing with the tabernacle. The actual tent itself cannot be seen because it's, it's got four coverings on it. You, all you can see is the white fence around it and that's what that's the body okay now look at this part inside that that tent you have three parts the intellect the will and the emotions and you have this thing okay that green part this is where decisions are made the soul decisions are made in the soul this is why you're going to be held accountable this is why the soul is going to be held accountable um, 
because that's where you make the decisions. You're going to be held accountable for what you do. And look at this. Then there's the cherubims, the, 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 the curtain with the cherubims. That means you cannot go beyond that curtain. That's, you're, you're out. That's the spiritual aspect. The spiritual aspect is close to us as when we're born, we cannot go, we don't have the antenna, as it were. We don't have the device or apparatus to pick up, you know, like if you had a TV in here, we could pick up all the shows all, or, or a radio, we could pick up a receiver, we could pick up all the music that's in the air right now. It's traveling through here and the radio waves, we could pick it up, but we don't have that kind of device here, so we don't pick it up. So when God is missing, when the Spirit of God is missing inside you, you can't pick up God. That's why the Word of God is foolishness, because um, you restrict it. But He gives you the priesthood. Now all this is supposed to be a picture. It's a picture to train you, to show you what you have in Jesus. This is what's so amazing, folks. When you read the book of Hebrews, oh good night, it opens up. Whole Whoa, God says, now you see what you got? It's like having a Ferrari. Uh, your uncle gives you a, for a brand new 2018 Ferrari. And he gives you the keys, but you don't, know, you don't even know how to start the thing. And even then, it's got to be, they got to make a seat for you to conform to your body. So you, there you have a Ferrari, a nice machine, but you can't even drive it. You know? And that's what we have in Jesus. We have a Ferrari. And, uh, but you need to know how to drive it. And the Lord is going to give you, he gives you this in Hebrews. He gives you what you have. Um, but if you don't see the picture, it'll become a ritual. And that's what it became to Jews. It becomes a ritual. And they go through all the things over and over and over and over. You're missing the picture. Literally. Okay. So look, decisions are made there. Through the senses, you, you get data from the world, you know, all our senses pick up all the data that's coming in. And then you make decisions on, on based on, on the data you pick up through your, with your intellect, your, your will, and, and your emotions. And I think, folks, look what it says here, which, Romans 2, 15, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, the, not the law, but the work of the law, the work of the law. So, because with our, with our senses, like just like I learned through my mom, I learned to make decisions, you know, because I understood the way she was. Now, if my mom would have been messed up and so on, I still would have learned from her, you know, uh, it, because that's the way the conscience is. It, it's, it can be trained. And so, and I think that part in there, that's where the conscience resides. Uh, the conscience, awareness, understanding, and this is the work of Aaron, remember? That's what he does all the, he's the one that lights up the candle, the priest. They're the ones that burn the incense. They're the ones that eat the bread that's on the table there. They're, they're the only ones that, remember what David said, is there any food here that I can eat? He says, well, this is for the priests only. And David says, give me some of that. There's so much in there. But that's the work of Aaron. But once a year, He's going to be allowed to go. Now look at this. How be it that there is in, not in every man that knowledge for some with the conscience of an idol unto this hour eat it, eat it as a thing offered unto an idol and their conscience being weak is defiled. And that's what I was saying a little while ago. There's no such thing as an idol, folks. Mo, Paul tells us there's nothing. You know, um, if a meat is offered to an idol, if nobody knows if it's, it's a good, probably good steak, eat it, no problem. But if somebody says, that was offered to an idol, says, oh man, I can't eat it, for the sake of the weaker brother, because there's still nothing wrong with the steak. I mean, you could go behind the curtain and eat it anyway. And the Lord will say, you know, you could do that. In fact, when you read the history and you find out that the, that the Jewish people, the, the bankers up to Daniel, they were selling fish to the Catholic people, making a killing, and going behind the curtain and eating ham, you know? <laughs> Go figure. They were making a killing. They became the richest people of the time. The 16th century belongs to the Dutch people. You know, they're the ones that financed the 
company and so on, because they were making a killing with the fisheries. Now, now look what happens. Um, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. So God says there's coming a time when he's going to, that's a picture of the, of the ark in there. That's when God is in you. When God is in you, this is what happens. The curtain is done away with. And now the conscience is obedient to the Spirit of God because you're now getting insight. So this is, I, I needed to show you this to, to explain why I believe that Moses or Aaron is it's a picture of the conscience. Now, the law frustrates, brings guilt. We already talked about that. We said that. And so Aaron is a picture of Jesus. It's just a picture to come. And so this is why, oh, wretched man that I am, because the, the law brings guilt, because the law says don't do it, and we do it. You know, the law says don't be covetous, and yet I'm covetous. Uh, then now I got problems with the, with the, with the conscience because the conscience says, you're covetous because I just saw a Ferrari and I said, wow, that's nice. I wish I could have it. And the law says, huh, huh, huh? Aren't you content with what things that you have? Yeah, but that's a nice car. Nonetheless, you just messed up. And so now you're frustrated. So, oh, wretched man that I am. So, but look at this, folks. Um, so once a year, the priest could go into the Holy of Holies to offer a sacrifice to pacify the conscience, to take care of that thing. Once a year. This Now, he would go in there with the blood of goats and bulls to offer for himself and for the people. That's what we're told. And he was a Levi. Okay, we already saw that. He's a Levi. But when you get, and see, and now here's what it means also. All the priests, because eventually the high priest would die. And there's a story about the high priest. They would die, and then their, their sons would take be the next in line. So it was a never-ending story. The high priest dies, and then the next one in line. And there's high priests in there in this Bible that were bad, like Eli. He was fat and didn't do his job. He was just, his sons were just messing everything up. The, boy, the boys, Phineas, they were bad. Um, I mean, not Phineas. Uh, uh, but that means that they would die and then somebody else say sober. It was a never ending story. So once a year, it's an ongoing thing. That's what this means. But Jesus, Jesus is not from Levi. We're told he's from Judah. Wait a minute. Priests are not supposed to come from Judah, but Jesus does. Jesus doesn't come from Levi. He comes from Judah. So what's the thing with Judah? This is the kingly tribe. This is where the kings come from, the good kings. They come from Judah. Wow. Man. What does that mean? Well, it means this. He's after the order of Melchizedek. Uh, he's from there. And when he came into the tabernacle, he brought his own blood. He didn't bring the blood of goats. So this is what the Bible is saying here. Look, and he finished. He doesn't do it over and over and over because... This is why. Look what it says here. Without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like unto the Son of God, abideth the priest continually. 24-7, he's a priest. He never, he's always making intercession for you. So you don't have to wonder about this priest. He's always alive. He's there, up there now. Wow, this will give you... It's amazing. This will give you peace, folks. Because God, Jesus, is different. Look what it says. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all first, being by interpretation king of the righteousness, after that king of, Pe of Salem, after which is king of peace. This is the king. And if you, have, if you understand what you get in Jesus, this is what you're going to get. Peace. Because it's already been taken care of. The conscience is over there right, nagging you, nagging you, nagging you, and says, ah, go away, please. You know, I'm going to go to sleep. 
Because I got peace. Why? Because Jesus already took care of it. He's the king of peace. He is the king of Salem. The king of righteousness. That's what's so amazing, folks. And for if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of the heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the pure of honor, the flesh, that's the temporary. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? So he frees you to serve God because he, here's the thing with a, if you have a guilty conscience and the devil can do a work on you, he can do a work on you, which means he'll stop you from working for the Lord. If you have a guilty conscience, that's the one way, to, a sure way to stop you from working for the Lord. But God says, you need to get rid of that. It's already been taken care of. So you need to remind yourself that that's been taken care of. So you can work, serve the living God. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw nigh with a true heart and full assurance of faith. You can, and another place it says boldness. We can have boldness, folks. We can have boldness, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. So this is, now the Lord has sworn, and that, it's amazing, folks, because that's a double whammy. We're going to see if we can cover that. Now, getting back into the story, we're just in verse 2. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings, which were in their ears, and brought them to Aaron. Now here's what Aaron is doing. See, this is, we're now looking at Aaron as the conscience. I mean, he's doing this. Give me, because they said, make us gods. And Aaron says, okay, give me the ears. The, give, me, give me your earrings. And it's funny because some Bible, some Bible ver translations say that nose rings. I says, it, nose rings don't make sense. Uh, this is why they shouldn't change the word of God because you mess it up. You mess up the picture. See, twice we're told earrings, break them off. And so this is the earring. Why the earring? Well, I'm glad you asked. Brought, and they brought them to Aaron. They gave Aaron the earrings. Then, now look at this. In the Bible, we're told, then his master, with this concerning slaves, then shall, if a, if a slave doesn't want to leave the master, after he serves his time, he can leave, but if he wants to stay, the Bible says he can have his ear board and then put a ring on there. Then his, then his master shall bring him to the judges, he shall bring him to the door or unto the doorpost, and his master shall bore his ear through with an owl, and he shall serve him forever. So once you want to serve your master willingly, you, you, if you had an earring, that's what that means. You were serving your master out of, out of your own, because you wanted to. You wanted to serve your master. So Aaron says this. Now, as, ear, as an earring of gold and as an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover upon the obedient ear. This is what Proverbs 25 tells, tells us. What the symbolism of the ear means is it's an obedient ear. That's an obedient ear to the master. Because if you, if you have a master, your job is to do the master's will. And he'll call you. I need a glass of water, fix the flat tire, go mow the grass, da 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 So you're constantly hearing what the master will say, wants you to do. You're, you have an obedient ear. But if you don't have that ring anymore, see? And the reprover, that's to correct, convict, that's error. That's what I believe here is... And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graven tool after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee out of, out of the land of Egypt. So he received them, Aaron, from their hand. The people gave him the earrings. And so they made a golden calf. And with a graving tool. And that's amazing. That's a chisel set in stone and that's what I mean you can train up a child and when he's old he will not depart from it because you already trained his conscience 
And that's what I believe the Bible says. You can train him up. You can train his conscience. And that chisel means it's pretty set in stone. Once you, once you write in the conscience, it, it, that's why you can retrain it with the Bible, though, of course. A molten calf. And I believe the molten calf means it's a, it's a calf, a bullock, most expensive gift, a costly sacrifice. And so what you're sacrificing is, and they said, notice this, I thought Aaron made the cow, the calf, but they said, these be thy gods, the people. And so I think this is what you're sacrificing. You're sacrificing the hearing to the master because you're not listening to, the, to, the, to Aaron. The word of God is, you either have Aaron, the conscience, or you have the word of God, one of the two. But Moses hadn't come down from the mountain yet. So they're going with the conscience. And you know, and so they said, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. These be thy gods. And they're wrong, of course, because they're not listening to God. They're not listening to Moses, the law. So they're going to decide their own God that brought them out of the land of Egypt. And of course, that's wrong. That's not true. So the word of God is out. And when Aaron saw it, let's go, uh, let's cover just this. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast day unto the Lord. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and broad peace offerings unto the people. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and to rose up to play. So Aaron built, Aaron saw it. That's the conscience, made a proclamation. That proclamation means an official announcement. And I'm thinking, what is Aaron thinking? But as the conscience, he can do that. He can be sincerely wrong. He's sincere, but he's sincerely wrong because the Lord there is Yahweh. They're doing this to a feast unto the Lord. But notice what they say. They offer the burnt offering and peace offerings. That's what they offer. But there's five offerings, folks, and nothing is mentioned of the other three. These two are the ones that are easy. The other three are left out. The meat offering, that's where you offer yourself back to God, and the one for sin offering or trespass offering, nothing is mentioned of that. So what I'm saying, that you can be sincere, but you can be sincerely wrong. The conscience can get you into trouble because you can be, you can be sincere, but that won't get you off the hook because you're sincerely wrong. There's a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. So, I wanted, I'm, I'm going really fast because I wanted to cover a lot. Um, hopefully, I can, you know, you see what, I, I wanted to explain why I'm seeing Aaron as a conscience. So, hopefully, that did the job. So, let us, let's stop there. Lord God, thank you for your kindness and goodness towards us. Thank you for for your word, O oh Lord, that is so fantastic. Help us now to, Lord, just rejoice in you and to thank you for all the goodness you've done to us and to enjoy the rest of the day and the service. In your name, Jesus Christ, we pray. For beside you, there is no God. Amen. Amen.